As the launch of the Nintendo Switch Online approached, I started to get a little intimidated. I was thinking, okay, there's going to be 20 NES games that launch with this online. Are they all going to be separate downloads, as in, separate battery life readings, separate reviews? Thankfully, they weren't. Since Nintendo set them up as a sort of emulator app sort of thing, I thought, you know what? It'd be a lot easier to just review the app itself, rather than 20 reviews for 20 games, oh my gosh. So now that the online has launched, let's talk about these NES games and their app. Here is my review of NES Nintendo Switch Online for the Nintendo Switch. Whenever I go into this app, it's like a big collection. You boot it up, there's all these games to choose from, and you choose one and you go right into it. Do note that the American app only has the American versions of these games, but if you have a Japanese account on your Switch, you can take a little stroll to the Japanese store, download the NES app without a subscription on that Japanese account, and launch it with your American or European account that has a subscription and you can play all the Japanese versions. Which I think will be very useful if we ever get to a situation where there are exclusive games between regions. Now as far as the games themselves, there aren't a lot of strictly single player games here. Nintendo added online multiplayer to a lot of these NES games, so a good chunk of them are sports games that are geared towards that online multiplayer, like tennis, baseball, and tech mobile. But if you're like me and like more campaign-based single-player games, there are a few good titles here. Super Mario Brothers, if you never bought the arcade version for the Switch. But more notably, the original Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers 3. Now as far as this app's features go, on the sidebar you can go into your different multiplayer modes, single player, local multiplayer, and online multiplayer, which the latter is exclusive to people on your friends list, no online matches with randoms. And finally, settings so you can adjust the resolution of the game. And that's one thing I'm gonna nitpick here. You've got three options in resolution. You've got 4-3 ratio where the game extends to the top of your screen with borders on the side, Pixel Perfect, which is a much smaller 4-3 ratio with borders all around it, and the CRT filter, which is like 4-3 except with a CRT filter. My problem here is they didn't give us any options for a full screen mode or a widescreen mode. Now granted, the games might look a little bit stretched out in these modes, but when I'm playing in handheld mode, I really like the game to take up the whole screen. Even the arcade archives have these sort of emulator 101 features. Now what I do really like about the way things are set up is that the game collection that you can cycle through is fully customizable and you can organize everything. As fewer titles fill up a row, the game images get larger showing a focus on them. So you can put all your favorite games in a certain row so they're more prominent on the screen and you can reach them a bit easier. And the final thing I'll say about the UI is it's very simple and it's constantly reminding you how to do stuff. When you go into a game, you've got this constant little reminder on the bottom what the plus minus and triggers do that you can't really get rid of it's good so you never forget how to do stuff but just note that you can't make that go away just like you can't make the borders go away and let's stay on the topic of those controls for a second you have those controls on the screen at all times but the actual in-game controls are locked in place you don't have the option of remapping button controls the only reason this is really a problem is because of what the buttons did back then. In a lot of modern platformers, you jump with the B button and run with the A or Y buttons. In this game, the B button is run and the A button is jump. And since the controls are locked, you just kind of have to get used to it. And remapping button controls just feels like another Emulator 101 feature to me that should be here. But let's move on to actual performance. How do the games perform? What are they like? Well, they're exactly the way they were back on the NES, glitches and all. The only real part of the game that was polished and touched up on was the added online multiplayer. All of the graphical glitches and audio glitches are still here. So if you remember all of that screen tearing from Super Mario Bros. 3, that's not going to go away when you play it on the Switch. But that's more of a minor thing. The major problem and worry for performance is the CRT filter. 
When you play a game for a while with the CRT filter, especially in handheld mode, it will create a temporary burn-in effect on your Switch's screen. If I play Super Mario Bros. 3 for about 5, 10, 15 minutes and I close the emulator, a lot of the blocks on the game's HUD will still be on the screen showing themselves. Thankfully, this is only temporary and it disappears after about 10 or 15 minutes, but it's still worrying and something that I'm sure will encourage players to avoid the CRT filter at all costs, mostly because it's the only filter that I've noticed this happen with. Now getting past all this negative stuff, the games actually play really well. I haven't noticed any input lag in any of the games that I've played, and the rendering and emulation is rock solid. So if you're worried about them not playing well, they play pretty much perfectly. Now before we close this out, let's talk about battery life. Thankfully, every single game in this application has the same battery life, so that's good for me because I didn't have to do 20 different battery rating tests for this review. The NES emulator for Nintendo Switch Online has a battery range of 4 hours and 29 minutes at high settings, all the way up to 6 hours and 28 minutes with low settings. I kind of expected this since it's NES games, but over 6 hours of battery life is great. Now in conclusion, the NES app really looks spiffy and has a lot of really neat organizational features that a lot of people have actually been asking Nintendo for for the Switch's UI. Now it definitely has a lot of things to improve on, from the lack of button remapping and full screen options, to the temporary burn-in effect for that CRT filter. But despite its flaws, it's a lot of fun to have some of these games on the Switch, especially the original Zelda and Super Mario Bros. 3. Reviews to Go rates NES for the Nintendo Switch Online a 7 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at reviewstogo.com. Before I go, I just want to take a moment to thank all of my donators and patrons. I appreciate and use all donations that I receive to further both the quantity and quality of the content here on Reviews to Go. Thank you very much, and if any of you would like to donate, head over to patreon.com slash reviews to go, or if you'd rather do a one-time donation, head over to paypal.me slash reviews to go. Thanks again for watching the review. Have a great day.